When I cook meat, I love to think about all the ways I can make the most of what I have to really cook with economy in mind. So I'm gonna show you some of my best tips and tricks from how to store meat properly and wrap it for the freezer, how to grind meat at home, how to quarter a whole chicken. Using the whole animal is way more economical than buying it in all of its parts. So here's a series of my tips and tricks. Now, if you like these videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel and share your comments with me below. I'd love to hear how you do it at home. Do you know how to quarter a whole chicken? Buying a whole chicken is much more economical than buying its parts, and you can easily quarter it yourself at home. In this video, I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step process from where to place it on the cutting board to how to use your knife efficiently and how to make the proper cuts. With these simple steps, you'll be sure to stretch your dollar further. Now let's get started by making sure we have the bird facing the right way. You want it breast side up and legs facing you. Next, I'm gonna take one of the legs and I'm gonna pull it away from the breast to reveal this loose skin. You're gonna use the tip of your knife and use long, swift motions to reveal the joints. Now once you've done that, you're gonna pop it back and you're gonna reveal the ball joint. You're gonna cut through that and you're gonna flip it over and cut around the oyster. Now the oyster is a round, fleshy piece of meat along the spine. It's my favorite part, it's delicious. Now you might need to use the heel of your knife to cut through that joint. But if you have a really sharp knife, you might not. Just like that, cut it right off. Set that aside and now we're gonna do the same to the other side. Pull the leg away from the breast Reveal the joint by cutting away the loose skin. Pop it back. You'll hear that joint pop. Then you'll cut around that oyster, which is the round, fleshy piece along the spine. And you'll cut through that joint and pull it right off. That simple. Now we're gonna move on to the breast, America's favorite cut. You simply take the blade of your knife along the breastbone. You cut from the top all the way to the bottom through the skin to reveal that flesh. And you slowly work that meat away. Make sure you feel the breastbone with your fingers to make sure you're getting maximum meat off of it. You're gonna loosen it at the tip, cut through that extra fat. You can always trim it more later. Cut it all the way off that breastbone until you get to the joint where the wing is. Then you're gonna cut through that joint with the heel of your knife. Voila, super simple. Now you've got the wing and the breast attached and we'll deal with that later. Now we're gonna do it to the other side. Feel for the breastbone, use the knife, and cut all the way top to bottom in one smooth motion and feel where that meat peels away. Then you're gonna help it with the knife. Cut through the bottom where the tip is. Be gentle, be careful not to push too hard and cut yourself. Now, pull it back a little more, feel it. I always like to get my hands in there to feel where I'm at. All right, I have a little bit more. I'm gonna take the knife Swift motions. I'm gonna cut through the back. Cut it off right at the tip here. Cut through any excess fat. All right, and there's that joint again. I'm gonna cut right through it, the heel of my knife. All right, and there we've got it. Now here are our quarters. You could also turn it into eighths. I'll show you how the chefs do it. And don't forget to save this carcass, it's pure gold. It makes the most incredible stock and soups. You could always just freeze it for a rainy day, take it out, roast it, throw it in a stock pot with some vegetables, it's amazing. Now you could freeze these, or you could cut them into eighths, and this is how you do that. With the breast, typically in fancy restaurants, you'll see chefs leave the wing on, and they'll cut on a bias right in the middle. So they'll take their knife and they'll cut on a bias just like so. 
and these will be two portions. You could also roast it whole and then slice it once it's been cooked. Now, for the leg, there's a natural seam between the thigh and the drumstick. So that's where you'd cut those in half. Now I'm gonna take my knife, cut through and right through that joint. You can see right there, we've got two beautiful pieces. The skin is gonna crisp up so nicely. So there you have it. You can do quarters, eighths, freeze the carcass, save it for a rainy day, or just cook it all at once. I'd love to know, do you have any tips of your own? Do you do any home butchering? Leave it in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more modern pioneering tips. Mmm, this chicken tagine smells so good. And it brings me back to my days cooking in the south of France, where the cuisine was so heavily influenced by the Mediterranean. The traditional way to make a tagine is actually in a tagine, a clay pot with a deep cone-shaped lid. But here's a way you can make it at home, in a cast iron skillet. Because this dish is all about the spices and aromatics, it's so versatile. I've used chicken here, but you could use a whole host of other birds, from pheasant to duck to goose. For more recipes like this, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.
Make the juiciest burgers and tastiest meatballs all year long by learning how to grind your own meat at home. In this video, I'm gonna discuss the types of meats to use and the supplies you'll need. And then we're gonna dive into grinding some meat. Two of the biggest perks of grinding your own meat is that one, you have full control of what goes into it, and two, you can actually stretch your budget further by buying cheaper cuts of meat or discounted cuts in bulk and freezing them for use later. It all comes down to one question, what do you have? Today, I'm gonna make venison meatballs. To make it, I'm gonna use chuck roast, venison, and some fatty pork belly. Almost all recipes call for some fat. More on that later. Now you wanna make sure you have the supplies you need. Obviously you'll need a meat grinder, and then you'll also need two dies, one larger and one finer. Now I'm just using a simple attachment to a stand mixer. It'll do about five to seven pounds. It's not the most powerful option, but it'll work for my needs. Other items to include in your supply list include two large stainless steel receptacles, one for storing your meat and one for catching your ground product. Then you'll need a kitchen scale and a calculator to determine your fat percentage. Whatever your end state may be, whether it's meatballs or burgers, sausage or salami, that'll determine how much fat you put in there. Now, the fat is important because it creates a texture and a mouthfeel, and it also helps you actually form the patties or the burgers. Super lean meat is much harder to form. For burgers, 10% fat is a good minimum. For sausages or meatballs, however, the 20% range is best. To calculate the fat percentage, there's a simple mathematical formula. Total weight of lean meat times your desired fat percentage equals the total weight of fat needed. A final tip to grinding your own meat is to cut your meat into one inch size cubes ahead of time and put them in the freezer. That's gonna help them from becoming gooey as they're pushed through the grinding die. Also throw in your grinding dies. That'll help you as well and it'll help make sure nothing overheats. So let's grind some meat. I've got my semi-frozen cubes of meat here. I've got three pounds of venison, three pounds of chuck roast and about one pound of fatty pork belly. Now I've got two containers here. I've got one that I'm setting under the grinder and one full of meat. I'm gonna put this all in the hopper and I'm gonna set it to about a four. Starting with the larger die, working at the pace of your grinder, gently press the meat through, alternating between lean and fatty pieces as you go until all of your meat has been used. At this point, you're ready for burgers and meatloaf. But for meatballs or sausages, you'll wanna run it again through the fine grinding die. Just simply cover the bowl of ground meat and place it back in the freezer while you clean and reassemble your attachment. Then repeat the process again. Whether this is your inspiration to try this at home or you're a seasoned meat grinding veteran, let me know what you think in the comments section below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. The key to storing and freezing meat effectively is how you wrap it before it goes into the freezer. Today I'm going to show you step by step how to do just that so that you can maintain maximum flavor and freshness. Remember, if you like these videos, comment below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Freezer burn is the most common form of wasted meat in the freezer. It's the process of dehydration when the meat isn't wrapped properly. Most people don't realize it, but even ice evaporates over time. So today I'm gonna to show you how to wrap this properly. The first thing you wanna do is remove any store wrapping. In this case, it's wild boar that I hunted, so it didn't have any. Next, place the meat in the center of a piece of plastic wrap on a flat surface. Encase the meat with plastic by folding over one side and pressing out all of the air. Repeat with the other side, pressing out any air again. You'll have two wings of plastic available on the other sides. Now, fold the first wing over the meat and the second overlapping the first so you have a fully encased piece of meat. Repeat this process with a second piece of plastic so you have a double coating. Put the plastic wrap meat in a resealable plastic bag, pressing out any air as you seal it. Uh, uh, uh. 
Lastly, label the bag clearly with a permanent marker, letting yourself know what the contents were and the date it was frozen. You may think you're gonna remember now, but six months from now, you'll be glad you did. And practice first in, first out. That means use first what you froze first. You don't wanna let any tasty little morsels go to waste. Have any tips to share? Leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Want to learn how to make the most delicious meatballs you've ever had? Let me show you how. Here's a recipe for venison meatballs that you're going to want to make again and again. Here's a pro tip, if you want to ensure that these stay nice and round, refrigerate them before you cook them. For more recipes like this, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.